finally got the right wind to get back into this set. Back in here after old Brutus. Not gonna lie, my odds are looking dimmer and dimmer by the day. Um, I know it's, I got the whole rest of this week, but next week I gotta get back to work. And at the end of this week is gun season. Uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'd really like to get on this deer with a bow. I mean, that's always the goal is I'd rather, um, I'd rather bow hunt any day. The way this season has gone and how tough it's been on us and um, only having the one property and I've been hunting. This is my 38th day of hunting now and I've seen this deer one time and take everything into consideration the way this season has played out. Even though I'd rather take him with my bow, I'll take him any way I can get him. <laughs> so.
Is he still there? Lost him. Yeah. There he is. I can see him. When he comes back. When he comes back in there. Oh, I'm going to take a shot, okay? Can you see him? No. It's uh, opening morning of gun season here in Illinois. November, what is today? 19th. I just spotted Brutus. Presumably with a, with a doe at the other end of this uh, big goldenrod patch. And I had him in the crosshairs twice, but I wasn't sure on the yardage, so he got up and then he ran off a two-year-old eight point and then he came back and bedded up. It looked like he was limping pretty good. And then our big three-year-old 10 went up there. And um, when he was up there, he got up again and looked like he went towards both of them. But now we can't see him. We don't know where he's at. I had him in the crosshairs again, but he just didn't stop and didn't didn't feel comfortable taking that shot. We think that he went, um, we have a stand up there and we think that he went into some gnarly stuff right next to the stand. So we keep seeing those younger bucks popping out. So we believe he's right in there with a the doe still. So we're gonna try and get down and uh, basically put on a stock. We're gonna go around and get to the north side of them and come up real, real slow and see if we can spot where these deer are at. Hopefully try and get a shot at him. and I got snuck up here and spotted that two-year-old eight bedded out here in this grass, like 40 yards from us, 20 yards from the tree that we're in. And this was the goal, was we wanted to try to get to this stand. That way we could see into this goldenrod out here and see if we could spot and bed it up again. Well, once we got up to this tree that, this, that we have a trail camera on right below here, right below the stand, all of a sudden, the two-year-old got up, started walking straight south, and a three-year-old ten popped up. Um, he was either bedded right inside the timber here, or like right on the edge of the timber. I couldn't really tell because there's some tall grass right in there. But he got.
got up and he bristled up and he walked that two-year-old off. And then he came out here and fed. And uh, the wind picked up a little bit and as he fed to the west, he got into this golden rod out here. We were able to make a move and crawl up the tree because we figured, we, we, we were hoping that Brutus was still bedded out here with this doe. And once that three-year-old got close to him, he would get up again to uh, push him off, uh, to run him off like he did earlier in the morning. And uh, that wasn't the case. The three-year-old, we, we were able to get up the tree and the three-year-old was out here sniffing where they were bedded this morning where I, when I first saw him. And uh, he worked his way kind of zigzag through this golden rod and then went straight west and then turned and went south. And the two-year-old that he pushed off to the south here turned around and came back up through the golden rod. Did the exact same thing that he did, basically. Worked straight west and then I think eventually started working south. So we know, or at least we believe, that Brutus is not bedded up with his doe right out here in this middle patch of goldenrod. Um, otherwise, when they walked by, he probably would have stood up and tried to um, run those deer off again. So we think he's either bedded back here um, in this really thick stuff on the edge of this ditch, or right here just on the edge of the timber, just inside the timber, where these two bucks were bedded. Um, I don't think he's going anywhere. You know, if those bucks were gonna hang around and challenge him again and try to walk in on the doe, you know, maybe he'd move a little bit, but he's he's somewhere right up in here with this doe. Quarter to 11, we're gonna slip out of here because we don't think he's going anywhere. That doe's not gonna go anywhere probably until she wants to feed later on. So, the wind's actually pretty good now. We're gonna slip out of here and, uh, Go grab a bite to eat and then come right back out. And by then the wind is going to supposed to pick up a little bit and the wind is supposed to stay true for this evening. So we'll be able to get back in this tree. The afternoon of November 19th, opening day of Illinois' firearm season. If he's with a doe still bedded somewhere in this vicinity, she'll want to get up to feed here this, this afternoon. We should be able to get a shot, so we'll see what happens. Got him. I got him. Bam! Yeah. He's behind that stuff. He's gonna he'll be on that path. Bam! Yeah.
old sucker, man. Look at that toad, man. I am so freaking pumped. Look at how beautiful that deer is. Busted that brow off. Super rundown. Oh, man. He's done it every year the last... Oh, yeah, you can see in you know, the photos. Three years. I just can't stop looking at him. I never can, you know. And this was the one deer that I set my sights on that I wanted. 42 days we've hunted this deer. And this is the fourth time we saw him. We've had history with this deer for the last three years. And he is rut crazed every year. He runs himself ragged. I mean, he literally runs himself to death almost during the rut every season. And I mean, we can go back through photos and, and see him do this, but he's always just been this, this slick, clean eight pointer. I mean, he's not a monster by any means. When this deer popped up, you know, it was like we saw a booner, you know? <laughs> I mean, it just, chasing after these mature bucks, especially when you when you go after one specific buck, it's just, there's nothing like it. I've got so much love and respect and admiration for these animals. Uh, he did not make it easy on us, my goodness. I mean, we, we had daylight photos of him everywhere and we could not get on him to save our lives. I mean, all through October, here the beginning of November, we had, we had him daylight everywhere. This morning we had him up here. Like I said, he ran off that two year old and three year old, we got a little bit of footage of that and we decided to do a stalk because we saw where we thought he went bedded. So we looped around basically the entire property, came in the other side, went to that stand that we were sitting in tonight, saw the two year old, saw the three year old and uh, they went through this CRP and now we were just talking about it, you know, where he came from this evening and where those bucks went to, where we watched that two and three year old go, he must have ran this way and went right past this other stand that we got out of this morning. He's just a beautiful deer, look at that thing. An old crusty eight pointer, I said it. I said it earlier in the season, you've never seen two guys chase after an old crusty eight pointer as hard as we have this season. I can't thank you enough, Jonathan, for going with me, riding with me, you know, all these days and uh, really, you know, taking a back seat in your own season to just let me go after this deer. I mean, you could have very easily said, no, I want to go after that deer. But uh, you knew how bad I wanted him and, and I can't thank you enough for that. My wife can't thank her enough for putting up with, with me being gone as much as I am to chase these incredible creatures. I mean, I wouldn't be able to do it as much as I do if she, if she didn't put up with it. <laughs> she knows it's my passion. This stuff means the world to me, and these animals. These animals, it's all about the animal.